Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Indie Comics Review. This is the show where every week I review three indie comic books. If that's the kind of content that you find interesting, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. Also, there's a link below to my Alternative City shop where I sell t-shirts, buttons, stickers, and lots more stuff that I make. Let's get started right away with the first book, which is Dark Beach Number 1. It is written by Michael J. Ruiz Unger and it is drawn by Sebastian Perez and is on the Behemoth label. Earth has been drifting away from the sun for 300 years, but that doesn't stop Gordo, a crime scene photographer living inside the dome protected city of New Reykjavik from dreaming about its warm glow. Is the sun as dangerous as the NRCE, the New Reykjavik Corps of Engineers, has led everyone to believe? Or will a murder rife with old sun mystery throw Gordo down a rabbit hole to find the truth. It turns out Dark Beach is my favorite book of the week. Uh, this is a story of uh, Gordo, who is a crime scene photographer. Uh, he's got this connection at the, at the local newspaper. Apparently newspapers have made a comeback uh, a couple of centuries down the road. And uh, he listens to the police scanner and he gets a tip on this murder. He shows up at the murder scene. He starts taking photos. And, and this woman was using some type of a virtual reality uh, sun thing. There are some people who, uh, there's a, a cult of people, I guess, who uh, miss the sun, obviously, and want to find ways to uh, enjoy the sun on Earth. And there's artificial sun clubs around and this woman may have been uh, a member of one of these clubs. Gordo finds a clue at the crime scene. She normally doesn't take clues from crime scenes but something compels him to pick up this little piece of paper that has a sailboat on it and just by chance he discovers that this is a, a napkin from a place called the Mayflower and this is a, a, one of those sun clubs that I was talking about earlier and it looks like this woman was a member of the Mayflower Club. And what connection does the Mayflower Club have to her death? We are yet to find out. I'm always interested in a good detective story. It looks like uh, Dark Beach might be just that. And he's not necessarily a detective, but uh, he gets involved in crime cases much as a detective would do. And to make ends meet, Gordo also works as, as a construction worker. There was kind of a dark, snarky cynicism about Dark Beach. That's one of the fun things about it. I really want to know how life without a sun is going to work. Uh, it may not sound possible, possible, but in this story, I'm willing to suspend belief and see what the storyteller does with this plot. Dark Beach seems like um, a clever idea for a detective thriller or a murder mystery um, with different circumstances, clever circumstances that you might not think about, like no sun on earth. Uh, so I'm really interested to see what happens in the future issues of this book. Dark Beach number one, I would definitely pick this book up. It's a winner. Next book is The Secret History of the War on Weed number one. And it is written by Jerry Duggan and Brian Posen and is illustrated by Scott Koblish. And it's on the Image Comics label. Brian Posen, Jerry Duggan, and Scott Koblish reform Voltron, metaphorically speaking, from their days on Deadpool. To tell a true story and lost chapter from our nation's sad and failed war on drugs. The year is 1985. The first lady decides to crush Northern California cannabis farmers and deploys the biggest tool in the armed forces, Scotch McTerran. If it weeds, we can kill it. Scotch puts his boots on the ground in Humboldt and does what he does best. This one shot has it all. Laughs, tears, heart, action, plus an activity page. A portion of the proceeds from this comic will be donated to organizations dedicated to helping casualties of America's immoral drug war. Yeah, this book actually has several activity pages and puzzles and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. This is kind of an over-the-top uh, action comedy uh, kind of in the, the same mold as uh, Team America. Uh, the same type of character, Scotch McTiernan, is, uh, in fact, this is uh, his first appearance and they make it sound like it won't be his last. Uh, because at the end of the book, they say, uh, be sure to, to check out Scott's next, Scotch's next adventure. Uh, it starts off with a, 
a line about the, the failed drug war and how and how it was completely immoral and, and racist and everything else. And after that, we, we had this this long uh, yarn about uh, which kind of blends history and fantasy. But at the end, there's also some seriousness as far as uh, what this book is uh, is meant to do. Uh, it, part, portions of the proceeds from this book will be donated to uh, certain organizations that uh, work to correct all the things that were done uh, wrong in the in the war on drugs uh, and all the people who were imprisoned and are still in prison for things that are now legal. So uh, with all the goofiness aside, there is a, a serious uh, point to this book as well. So old Scotch heads down to, to Southern California and, and uh, just attacks the, the whole cannabis industry. And when he gets down there, he starts uh, kicking ass all over the place. Uh, messing people up. That's what he's been trained to do. But eventually the guys get the drop on him and they subdue him and they put the whole gas mask bong on this guy and they get him high for the first time. And there's a transformation in this uh, character and he just sees the light, so to speak. And I think there is some truth to this uh, this whole get the get the hothead guy high and he no longer has this rage uh, you don't see a lot of really angry violent potheads so scotch has a complete change of heart he's just becomes a not necessarily a hippie but he has a um, a different outlook on life he's no longer violent he settles down with a girlfriend the nancy reagan character sends another batch of commandos to get scotch the the failed experiment and what happens with those guys is also pretty funny this is overall a really enjoyable book it's it's goofy uh it's over the top but there's a lot of truth and there's a lot of uh goodwill in this book uh, like i said proceeds of it will be uh sent to people who uh, are doing time for for marijuana to, uh, or cannabis offenses and uh, organizations that, that work to uh, do good things in the cannabis community. I think this is a perfect combination of a creative team that worked on Deadpool uh, to do a book like this. Uh, it's light, it's lighthearted in, uh, in some ways, and in other ways it uh, makes its point pretty clearly. I give, I give credit to Image Comics for having the nerve, uh, to having the courage to come out with a book like this but some people may have thought would be inappropriate. So uh, kudos to those guys. The Secret History of the War on Weed, uh, number one, um, definitely worth a worth a look. Uh, you spend five bucks on much worse things, I'm sure, and part of the money is gonna go to a good cause, and it's a pretty amusing book too, so uh, I recommend this book uh, absolutely. The last book is A Town Called Terror, number one. It is written by Steve Niles, and illustrated by Simone Kudaransky. And it is on the Image Comics label. Henry West is brutally kidnapped in the middle of the night while his wife Julie watches terrified. Henry awakens to the reality of his whereabouts, but Julie, with no evidence of the phantom crime, is unable to get help to search for him. A new series from the minds of cutting edge horror creator Steve Niles, 30 Days of Night, and Simone Kudaransky spawn The Punisher. I love the dark mood and tone that this book sets right from the start. Uh, it starts off with this guy being pretty much assembled uh, by some other guy in a like in a hazmat suit. And once fully assembled, the guy comes to life. And then we moved, and then we go to Henry and his wife, and they are about to have some ice cream before bed, and these uh these people just crash through the door, uh, crash through the window, and kidnap Henry at gunpoint. They tranquilize his, his wife, Julie, and she wakes up, he's gone. Uh, once he's been kidnapped, Henry pretty much knows what the deal is and is literally a, a town called Terror. And this town is like in sort of like another realm, or another dimension. Uh, or something like that. You drive right through this uh, th this portal, and you're you're in terror, literally, where things are different. And I think this person may be Henry's father. Meanwhile, Julie 
is just horrified because she is completely unaware of what's happening. Uh, uh, Henry knows exactly where he's heading. She has no idea what's happened to her husband. She calls the police and they give him, uh, and they give her this, uh, you have to wait 48, I think it's 24 hours or 48 hours, 24 hours before you can actually report a person missing, which uh, I believe is no longer the case in most places in this country. So uh, that's not exactly true anymore. Uh, and plus he was kidnapped literally at gunpoint. So I think the whole waiting 24 hours thing doesn't apply in a situation like that. But overlooking that, uh, she has no idea where he is. She waits the 24 hours and she's just like sitting by the phone hoping that something happens. Meanwhile, Henry is pretty calm for a guy who just got kidnapped. In fact, he's conversing with his kidnappers, uh, which he knows are agents for his father. And they're all welcoming him, welcoming him back to home, and he's like, "Tell him to fuck off," and he just he's just uh, pretty much at ease. Back at home, Julie is finally getting a cop to come to the house to uh, take a report for her, and of course, there is no video evidence of uh, what happened. They have surveillance cameras, which all of a sudden just uh, go on the fritz as soon as this event happened. It kind of makes you think that maybe the police are in on this or some other kind of force is covering up this event from happen that that is covering up this event that happened or does some other kind of um, powers at play that Julie is unaware of she, she's a, a completely innocent uh, participant in all this stuff a town called terror is uh, it's got some really nice art it's, uh, it's got a dark foreboding feel to it in a painterly kind of a style i don't know if um if I if I'm into it enough to um, to to go the whole series, I'll probably give it another issue. Uh, it just didn't 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 move me as much as the other books uh, this week. But you know, I'll give it another chance because uh, it has possibilities, and I want to find out what the deal is uh, with uh, <laughs> with Henry's old man who's like being assembled like a, a robotic Frankenstein. So a town called Terror. It's not bad, but it's not one of my favorite books, but um, I'm willing to give another shot and check out the next issue. So that's all for any comments review this week. Uh, be sure to uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn notifications on if you want to know when I'm making my next video. So until next time, folks, I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.